the unborn the child world becomes before Rome. This is exactly what I expected. Ah, oh, uh, they bring out the old code. You are arrogant. Go, go for it. Geraldo, come on, keep going. Okay, Joe. Make it a fool on of yourself. This, on this. Don't, don't you? You know something? What? You insulting punk. Geraldo wasn't wrong there, that's for sure. I can't believe he didn't slap that toxic little dwarf. Actually, yes, I can. You know why? Because he is a man who has been well seasoned over 50 years. Geraldo Rivera. He's been a headline because he's leaving Fox, that show, The Five, that he helped make a very big deal in Fox's lineup. And now he's out altogether after 23 years there. So why did he leave? And can there really not be a next for the guy who's been giving us the news and insight forever? Geraldo Rivera, welcome to News Nation. Hi, Chris. I came to your home and I look around. Where's Chris? Where's Chris? You're uh, 100 miles away. <laughs> You're too good looking for me to sit right next to <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, you. You look great. Uh, I could not be less objective uh, when it comes to you. Uh, you've been an amazing mentor to me. You gave me my start in television doing legal analysis for you. Uh, and uh, I really believe that you, you are the personification of television. Thank you. Uh, I've never seen anybody do it better than you do when you're running your own show. So why did you leave Fox? Well, that's a great question. Uh, first of all, where you are concerned, it was my honor to uh, help mentor you in your, uh, in your youth. I wanted very much for you to take over my daytime show when I was leaving to go on to, uh, uh, to be a newsman. You said, no, I want to be in news. Uh, so you went to work for a lot less money uh, than I was willing to pay you. I, I love you, your family. Your dad was one of my personal heroes. Why did I leave Fox? Uh, Fox left me. They fired me from the number one rated show, The Five. I, after they fired me, I said, well, wait a second. Uh, you know, I don't want to work here anymore. If you're firing me from the number one show, what are you going to do? They gave me a, a plethora uh, of options, other programs I could do. I could, uh, for instance, I was doing a series on the candidates for president. I had uh, uh, done an hour on Chris Christie, the governor. You just had an excellent interview. I did an hour with uh, Robert F. Kennedy uh, Jr. Uh, about him. And uh, they said you could finish that up uh, on uh, Fox Nation. Do that. I said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. You're, you're handing me What you know, was it about, best. Geraldo? What was Why the didn't they want you on The Five anymore? Well, as I, I, I mentioned earlier today, I had a toxic relationship with one of the cast members. But more than that, they didn't want me for whatever reason. You have to ask Fox the question of why they thought that my time had, uh, had come up, why they thought that uh, it was time to move on from me. Uh, they, uh, they started, uh, you know, suspending me for... Uh, you know, uh, breaks with uh, Fox policy. Uh, they started canceling my appearances. I was on uh, two, three times a week, then biweekly, then monthly, uh, and then even those uh, dried up. Uh, there was a lot of internal politics, uh, uh, the reason I, I surmise now. Uh, and it was, uh, was kind of creepy uh, there toward the end. I'm sorry it happened that way, Chris. Believe me, after 23 years, uh, of, a, you know, a generally speaking, I went to work there after 9-11. I went to work to be a war correspondent at Fox. I went there because NBC wouldn't give me the job of war correspondent, so I took half the money to go to work for Fox. Roger Ailes sent me immediately to Afghanistan. I did 11 assignments in Afghanistan, 11 assignments in Iraq, uh, in Somalia, in the Mideast, uh, Sudan, you name it. Uh, it was a... You know, and then Osama bin Laden was finally taken out by our heroes. The man who inflicted 9-11 on us was taken out in 2011. It was 10 years later. Uh, but we got the guy who did that awful thing to us. I should have left Fox then. I went to Fox for the war. I should have left when the war was over, just like the United States should have left Afghanistan after they got Osama bin Laden. Uh, so, uh, you know, I didn't. I stuck around, uh, lazy, uh, insecure. You stick for the money after a time. I was already deep into my 60s. Uh, so I, I stuck around. And then, uh, uh, you know, the five happened. I didn't expect it. I had already basically moved to Cleveland, uh, uh, you know, from New York. Uh, uh, but, you know, because of the pandemic, I was on remotely. It didn't, ma it didn't matter for a couple of years there. Uh, then when the disease finally, we were rid of the disease, I, I, you know, they, it, I, the commute was arduous. It was, uh, you know, a, a real strain on, on me. I had the worst 
commute in the news business. Uh, but I, I hung in there and I enjoyed doing the program, but um, the, the program apparently didn't enjoy me, Chris. Do you think that the reality is just that, you know, the personification of ugly, small ideas and taking cracks at everybody else is just what that place wants to be? Uh, and uh, they didn't want to see you give as good as you get with Gutfeld uh, and the other people around the table. Well, I, I think that there is truth to that. For example, I'll give you a, a concrete example because I don't like talking in generalities about, about some specific things. When Tucker Carlson came up with his bizarre notion that January 6th was an inside job, that it was a federal informants uh, who uh, uh, were causing trouble, that it wasn't the insurrection that the rest of us saw, uh, I said that that was a bunch of BS. I called BS on it. I got a call as soon as that was published in the Washington Post from Fox executives who said, you're suspended. You're not supposed to speak to the press uh, we, unless you clear it with us, which, of course, is, uh, you know, catch 22 because they never clear it. Uh, so I wanted to speak out on that because I was very offended by it. Everyone knows that it was Donald Trump inciting an insurrection. He inspired those people. He directed those people. He encouraged those people. He sicked those people on the capital of the United States. He stabbed the Constitution in the back. And I think that for Fox to pretend uh, that, uh, you know, there was an honest debate about January 6th or the 2020 election, I think was obscene. And I think it needed to be said. And to your point, saying it time and time again was counterintuitive or, uh, I, I guess, against the, uh, the direction that they were headed. But I was not going to go there. I think that uh, what happened with uh, Donald Trump disqualifies him from ever holding the presidency. I think Chris Christie, among others, would be a terrific president of the United States. I think that Donald Trump, by doing what he did, uh, by not only denying the election, but then inspiring and, and, and unleashing that insurrection and then encouraging this division in the country has disqualified himself. And if I have any air left to make my point clear, it will be to that effect that Donald Trump does not deserve, should not be ever again considered uh, for the presidency of the United States. Well, look, that, that's your opinion. And that's my opinion. Uh, regardless of what role the former president had or didn't have in January 6th, we just had the FBI director, who's a lifelong Republican and who was put in power by Trump, say it wasn't his guys and that he thinks the notion is absurd. And we know that one of the people fingered uh, in the Fox analysis of the situation is now suing them about it. So we'll see how that figures. But I will tell you this, and I want to go to break and I want people to have a chance to talk to you because calls sure. are flooding in for you, Geraldo, no surprise. I think you made them better. Uh, I think people Thanks. want the contrast. They want debate with decency. Me too. And I thought look, it was great. I would never, I would never want to take you on uh, head to head on any story, <laughs> especially if we were in the field, because I'd lose. Uh, but the truth is, I think you made the place better. Uh, I think that if if they're going to just rely on the Gutfelds and the Waters on the male side, they're really losing what the American people uh, want, which is balance and passion. But let's see what the people have to say to you, because they're the ones who have kept you in business all these years. That's You've always sure. been a fan favorite. So we'll take a break and we'll come back. And yes, Geraldo is older than I am. I know he has more hair and it's his. I don't know how and he's not going to tell us. Next. We are back with the man, the myth, the legend, Geraldo Rivera, taking your calls. Dusty, who do you have? We have Kate from Toledo, Ohio. Busy tonight. Kate, what do you got for Geraldo? Well, just a quickie. I'm from Barrie, Vermont, and I hope you'll continue to cover the flooding because Vermont has some really incredible people. But, Mr. Rivera, you are so loved by the American public oh, you're for so your nice. unbelievably honest reporting for the last 50 years. What do you think are your best and your worst career moves? <laughs> um, well, first, let me just uh, give my, my sympathy and uh, my care and concern for the people of Vermont. I think the flooding is, uh, has been catastrophic and so unique, and it's awful what, what is happening. Uh, you know, I, I opened Al Capone's vaults. I mean, you don't get a bigger faux pas than that. Uh, you know, I, the, the last time I got fired, 1985, by ABC, uh, because I objected to something that ABC News Management did. I was the most famous unemployed person in America. I mean, I, I joke. Uh, 
I, I, I was offered, I was sailing around the world in the Panama Canal. I got a, a call on a satellite phone. Uh, they asked me to come to Chicago to open uh, the gangster's vault. They discovered uh, in Chicago Al Capone's uh, secret vault, and uh, there are going to be dead bodies in there and weapons and gold and the, uh, the ill-gotten gains from the uh, notorious gangster. I, I opened it up on uh, two hours of live television. Uh, live in this country, uh, I think 16 other countries, the largest syndicated TV audience ever uh, to this day in the history of television, and the damn vault was empty. So I don't think you get any any more embarrassing uh, than that. But then that bad news became the good news because I was unemployed before I did it, and then I had 22 job offers the next day, and that led me to my daytime talk show, which led me to um, wonderful experiences, uh, meeting Chris and, and uh, millions of other people. Uh, a wonderful, uh, uh, you know, career move. Uh, I, I had a, a balance in my checking account for first time. So uh, I would say Al Capone for, for better and, and ill. Another call, Dusty. Um, we're going to go to uh, Belinda in Michigan. Belinda, what do you have for Ger Geraldo? Nice mug. Go ahead. Hi. Hi, Geraldo. First, I have to say, you have had such an impressive career, and you definitely deserve better than the way Fox News has treated you. Yeah, thank you. And secondly, you also have to know, how do you keep yourself looking so fabulous at your age? Oh, are you? I, I think the hair has a lot to do, assuming the, your premise is correct. Uh, I think the hair has a lot to do with it. My, I, I decided that I was not going to get a haircut until Fox said, Geraldo, get a haircut. That was in this period of uh, great tension. And they never came around. They said, never said, uh, OK, get your haircut. So one of these days, maybe if I ever get another job, uh, I'll, I'll cut it off. Uh, but for now, I'm having fun. Uh, I'm going to have uh, dreads or ponytail. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I hope that you're serious about getting another job because you've got plenty left in the tank. Thank you. Uh, for you, it's true. You know, Age I'm 80, is just I'm 80 years old. I, I mean, 80, I know. It I'm, I'm four me. score. It's, uh, it, I know. I'm, I'm shocked it shocks myself. Me. And so is Joy Behar, 80. We looked at each other. How is 80? 80. Oh, it's awful. It sucks. <laughs> Now, listen, but I'll tell you what, you're, you're redefining what it means to be it. you got uh, a lot of gas left you. in the tank, brother. You. you know that. Thank Let you. me get you another call. Dusty. Okay, well, let's try to do one more. Deborah from South Carolina. How you doing? What do you got for the big man? Hey, Chris, Geraldo. Hi. Let me tell you, you are too nice a guy and too smart to be on that Fox panel. That's number one. Oh. Number two, I agree with you 100%. Trump should never, ever be able to hold any office. And it leads me to, you once said Biden pardoning Trump the way Ford pardoned Nixon is a good idea. Right. I believe and that. And it would unite the country. Oh, okay. I just wanted you to explain that. Well, I remember, I was already in the news business. I started in 1970. Uh, you had the Nixon period. Then you had, uh, you know, the Watergate and, and so forth. And you had Nixon resigning and Gerald Ford taking over. The country was crazy divided. Uh, you had the war, the end of the civil rights movement. You had so many different things going on. Uh, but but w Watergate specifically and the end of the Nixon presidency really exacerbated uh, what divides us. Gerald Ford came in. The accidental president, he pardoned Richard Nixon, Watergate disappeared except in the history books and uh, Woodward and Bernstein being extolled for their virtue. But I, I would like to see that now. I would like to see Joe Biden pardon Donald Trump and Donald Trump pledge not to run for office again. Geraldo Rivera, you got into the business when I was born. And I have spent my entire life in this business trying to connect with the American people the way you do. You're a gift. Keep going. And thank you. That's all we got time for. Geraldo Rivera, Chris Cuomo, News Nation. I'll see you tomorrow night. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of News Nation's fact-driven coverage.